this whole car is a kind of love letter to what was. Mm -hmm. Like, back when pe people were free to do whatever they wanted to a car. Uh, Anti-conformist. Yeah. It sticks out. It makes all the loud noises. Yeah. So we've just arrived at a show today to meet up with a guy that has one of the coolest builds I've ever seen. He's 19, I think, and he's built this all himself in the last couple of years. I think it was his first car, and you won't believe what he does to afford it. We are here. Introduce yourself. I'm Gary. Otherwise, uh, I'm the Marlboro Man. <laughs> the Marlboro Man, and this is his car, the Marlboro Toyota Sora. What year is it? Uh, 88. So can you give us a quick walk around of what this car is and everything that you've done to it? So when I bought it, it was two years ago and it was a all white Sora. It had a completely different engine, it was automatic. It had some 40 year old wheels on it. Very period correct. First thing I did was changing wheels. And then I settled on the 2JZ, but not your normal single turbo, twin turbo, 400 horsepower car, I decided to go with a set of custom billet individual throttle bodies. And then we converted to a five-speed automatic, or a five-speed manual, and did the Marlboro livery. 90% of this car is fabrication because nothing went in this, nothing fit this. So it was a shop called uh, Triple S Motorsports. Yeah, I just so And they are, the, they are the JDM authority, I'd say, of Edmonton. How much did the build cost total? 20, 25, I'd say, is okay. what I've deep into it for. That's not bad for how cool this thing is. something that you can drive on half a brain like this car demands your full attention instead of just being brainlessly driving music's on just boring yeah like, this is fun it's a kind of belief I have with cars it needs to be engaging Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day. We've got the tofu. Time to go and make a delivery. So we're getting in the right side or the left side, I mean. It messes so many people up. So with the other car I have, the Alteza, it's also right hand drive. So one time uh, my mom went and got groceries and she was in a rush. So she loaded them all in this side of the car where the steering wheel is. And then she, <laughs> she got on that side. And it's, it was only until she actually sat down and she was like, that she realized, oh. like, oh, there's no wheel here. Just to clarify, this actually isn't your parents' restaurant. No. So explain to us a little bit about your parents' restaurant so and why my, we're not filming that. My parents' restaurant is located in the beach village of uh, Sunset Point. And as much as it would be nice to shoot there, it is currently about an hour away from where we are right now. That's the reason we're using a, this Korean restaurant that we found instead of our restaurant, which is Mama's in the Kitchen. I didn't want to confuse people and be like, well, <laughs> how the is white, that their son? How is that his parents? The whitest man alive, yeah. his parents on a Korean restaurant. Yeah, it is a little bit of a mess. Just one of the things you go through delivering food. Where's the all beautiful car? <laughs> Thank you. I could tell you were into it as soon as I saw Yes. <laughs> Have you ever had any experiences driving or delivering food in this car? Usually when you're delivering food, sometimes addresses are wrong. Google Maps doesn't tell you where to go right. You'll just call them and you'll just be like, hey, listen, I'm outside, I think. Can you look out your window to see if it's me? And they ask for your kind of, what kind of car you're in. I'm in the Marlboro car and they always crack up laughing. And they're like, oh yeah, I see you. <laughs> oh, awful decision to come down this one. But yeah. like, we have to meet them, and that, that's kind of, this car is kind of habit. People see it and they love it. You meet people by it. Time to deliver it. 
Let's hope the person doesn't come out. There we go. Well done. There we go. This is sick, man. Delivering food, just like Initial D. How much do you get paid with deliveries? Is it based on tips? Is it a salary? How does that work? Uh, so usually our system works for tips as well as distance. And then for longer drives where I was driving almost an hour. How much do you usually make on an average day of delivering food? Uh, for summer and winter, it's definitely a pretty big difference. Not in the way you think. Summer was often pretty busy. Usually I could clear four or five hundred bucks. A day? A day. And then in winter it was even more. And you get to keep that yep. or is that? It would go into gas and things like that, but I would I would get the full tips. Oh my goodness. And that's in summer. Winter was busier. People don't want to leave their home, so they're willing to pay more. Yeah. So we would add on uh, risk value. Because you don't want me going into some place and getting stuck. Yeah. Because now I have to shell out money for a tow, tow truck. truck. I remember on one of my trips, I, I borrowed a truck for it because I knew it would be bad. I was in a brand new Toyota Tundra and the snow was up to the doors. I still made it. Toyota. <laughs> so how much do you make in a year? Usually if I'm like, if I'm keeping on it, I was able to clear 50. So that's good money. It is good money, especially able to show like this. Yeah. I was a major thing that helped us get through COVID-19. I decided, let's bring on the delivery system, have my license, and a car that can get me around. It wasn't this just yet, it was an old Subaru. The schedule I'm usually on is uh, seven days a week. Starts at 7 a.m., goes till 7 p.m. Yeah. So you're working over full time. Yeah. It's not something that I could do for 10 years. It's not one of those careers. It's getting me through university. Piece of advice you'd give to someone watching this video. Things aren't always gonna be on the up. There's gonna be rough times, but if you truly believe in something, you just gotta keep pushing, no matter what.